Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Andre. I'm a software engineer at Google and tech lead of gRPC security team. And uh, today I'll be co-presenting with uh, my teammate, uh, Greg. And the topic of uh, our presentation today is uh, advanced uh, TLS. Uh, so first of all, uh, I was very happy to hear this morning that uh, a lot of you use gRPC in few languages because actually we cover Java, Go, and uh, uh, C++ during our presentation. Uh, so first of all, where TLS fits in gRPC stack? Uh, gRPC lifecycle was presented this morning during the gRPC overview keynote. And uh, actually, uh, it is used when it's time to establish the connection and perform a handshake. Um, the vision of our team, uh, gRPC is secure by default, first of all, and highly configurable. Uh, secure by default means if you run gRPC workload with default configuration, it already has meaningful security. Again, if you recall the talk this morning, uh, they passed insecure credentials just uh, to make th things simple. Uh, so actually, again, it means that uh, you need to instruct gRPC directly to use uh, insecure. And uh, uh, highly configurable means exactly what we are going to cover today. So uh, advanced TLS uh, helps you to configure gRPC to meet the unique security requirements of your uh, organization. Um, talking about the uh, status, uh, right now advanced TLS in Go and Java is uh, public and stable. Uh, what it really means, it means that next releases will be backward compatible, so we're not going to introduce any uh, breaking changes. But at the same time, it also means that we're not stopping developing any new features because features will be additive. And we'll be very he happy to hear your feedback and uh, uh, any requests for the new features. Uh, let's take a look at uh, pseudocode, a very high-level perspective. Uh, first of all, uh, Java, Go, and C++ underlying crypto libraries are all different, but security API we provide, uh, it's pretty much uh, the same. So actually, it follows uh, the same patterns across the languages. Uh, what you need to do, you need to create options where, include, where you can include all the features you need, and then you create channel credentials and uh, server credentials, then you create client and server using these credentials, and then finally you are ready to make uh, the call. Uh, options, they include a lot of different features. The most basic ones are, for example, like what ciphers you want to use or uh, TLS versions you want to allow. And uh, today we concentrate on advanced features. Uh, let's uh, start from uh, Java. Uh, first of all, a quick refresher about standard Java approach. Uh, as you can see on this slide, here we use uh, JDK's classes like KeyStore. Once you have your keys uh, and certificates, you can just instantiate the KeyStore, load everything there, and then you can use uh, Builder API to pass the key store and search store there. And after that, you can instantiate server credentials or client credentials, and you're ready to go. Um, what extra features gRPC Advanced TLS brings? Uh, first of all, it's loading and refreshing keys and certificates. Uh, second, it's different modes for custom peer checking, how to check peer after the handshake and the actual callbacks, so what uh, to do during such checks. Uh, Java Advanced TLS um, was made stable in uh, 1.66 release, so this August, so everything is uh, hot off the press. One very important note here, uh, the implementation, it wraps GDK Key and Trust Manager, so the actual crypto checks, they're still delegated to uh, this library. Um, why did we decide to add uh, the uh, support for dynamically reloading the certificates? Imagine that you already have your certificates and uh, you load them, you start your gRPC workload. Uh, the very next day, your security department decided to rotate the certificates 
And uh, well, now you have uh, two options. Uh, first one is to uh, load the new certificates and restart your workload, which isn't really optimal, or you can use our advanced TLS API. And you see the style is very similar to GDK one. Uh, instead of GDK classes, you just instantiate advanced TLS key and trust manager, and you still build server and client credentials using very similar uh, builder API. Uh, once you receive the new certificate, uh, the only thing you need to do is uh, to call a method to update identity credentials. And uh, it will be used for all the new handshakes, so uh, no restarts are needed. Uh, this slide shows a very similar approach, but the previous slide is event-based, right? Uh, we also have a scheduler-based API. So, for example, you already know uh, the schedule of certificate rotation, or uh, your service might have some SLO. For example, you pick certificates uh, every hour. Uh, this API, again, helps you to achieve that. And in this case, again, you create a key, advanced TLS key manager and trust manager, and everything happens under the hood. So uh, once the files are updated, they'll be picked up, and again, the certificates will be used for all the new handshakes. Uh, custom post handshake uh, verification. Uh, here, first of all, we need to change the verification mode to certificate only verification. Only here means that certificate will be checked, but no uh, host names. Uh, host name check will be performed. And now uh, you understand actually you expose yourself to man in the middle attacks. And now, as an advanced user, it is your uh, responsibility how to deal with these situations. So we provide uh, the following callback, and here you got access to the whole chain of certificates, and actually uh, you can uh, incorporate any logic you would like here. Uh, GRPCIO was already mentioned this morning as uh, the main hub for guides and examples. Uh, definitely, uh, it's a very good place to start. In addition to that, if you like to learn more about Java, I encourage you to check Advanced TLS Test. Uh, first of all, it definitely covers all the scenarios. This is how we check we uh, implemented things, uh, all right? And second, uh, also, you can uh, see uh, all the different uh, edge cases. Uh, simultaneously, uh, if you go to this check, you can see how things are configured and just scrolling by open source code, you can learn some very important implementation details which might be helpful if you decide to implement your own key and trust managers in Java. And I'm passing it to Greg to speak about Go. Hey everybody, my name is Greg and I'm going to talk about <coughs> advanced DLS in Go and then in uh, C++. So to start with Go, um, really exciting. Uh, we released the uh, 1.0 of uh, the advanced DLS package uh, a couple months ago. Um, so it is on the Go packaging indexes and um, it's on the gRPC Go GitHub. It is ready to use, it's stable. Um, it has been experimental for quite some time on the scale of years. So that this was a big commitment that we um, really got the fully stable naming feature set and everything ready to use. Uh, so now you can use this with the trust that it won't change out from under you. Um, the documentation on grpc.io is in progress as well as you know blog posts and such. Uh, but there are in the grpc go repository in the example subdirectory uh, there's examples of a lot of features, including advanced TLS and all the different ways that you can configure it. So a little bit of high level about this package. It is a separate package from gRPC Go. It is still in the same repository. We just release it separately so that we get to version the security code ourselves, and it's just much easier than tying it into the gRPC Go releases. And it supports all these similar features that Andre talked about with dynamic reloading of keys, certificates, certificate revocation support, and all this custom authorization. So let's take a look at a couple of these APIs. Um, so similar to Java, all of the security configuration is really in the credentials objects, the transport credentials. So no matter 
how you're configuring security, you're really configuring your credentials. You pass those into new clients. So you can use insecure credentials, you can use uh, new TLS, which is another API, and then these kind of advanced TLS credentials. But no matter what, you'll have code that looks something like this to run with your credentials. So here you can see, you know, we're passing in our transport credentials, and then there's nothing specific to security here. Uh, but this is how you create a client, you make a call. Uh, we're not going to focus on this. This is going to be security focused. So just assume for all of these examples that we have a function like this. And then we're going to focus on how we configure these credentials. So you would have seen this in the talk this morning. It's very easy to just say insecure.new credentials. There's no configuration, no nothing. You pass it in and your call works, but it's insecure. So our goal with advanced TLS is to be nearly this easy. Obviously, there is a little bit more configuration that you have to do, but we don't want it to be any kind of like complex implementation details, mostly just pointing at, you know, here's my certificates and everything. So the older API that is still there and still will work is to directly use Go's crypto TLS yourself. Um, so you, Go provides this library and you configure this tls.config. The, the thing with this is that there's a whole lot of options on the TLS config and you have to really know what you're doing to get this right. And there's a lot of things that interact that you can get wrong. And it's kind of easy to uh, accidentally create security holes. So the goal with advanced TLS is that we create an abstraction layer over the TLS config to make your life easier where you just get to kind of point at certificates you say, I want to do revocation, and then you don't have to directly use this TLS config at all. So kind of the big idea with these options is you provide an, a provider for your different information. So you say, here's how I get my identities, here's how I get my roots, here's how I get my CRLs, um, and then you make your credentials, and then those are your transport credentials that you just get to run with as normal. So stepping into how you make each of these, for example, uh, this would be how you make a provider to reload certificates, keys, root certificates. And while there's you know, a lot of boilerplate with the options here, the key things highlighted are just, here's the path to a file and how frequently I would like to refresh. So you just do this. You can create these providers, and then again, in the upper level options, this is where you put them, and then every handshake that you're doing will be using these providers. So if you're rotating certificates, it'll periodically refresh these so that you're not having to restart servers, not having to restart clients. Um, CRLs is another big thing that's in advanced TLS, um, the certificate revocation lists. Uh, and if you want to use CRLs, you are pretty tied to advanced TLS. The crypto TLS in Go does not support revocation by default. Um, there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions on uh, CRLs and X509 infrastructure, and that's kind of a, a deep other topic that you can dive into if you want, um, but it doesn't have it by default. Uh, as gRPC security, there's people that want to use it, so we'd like to enable the use of revocation if you want to. So again, we make it easy. You get to just say, here's a directory full of CRLs, and then you pass it through the advanced TLS options. And then when you're doing your TLS handshakes, it'll check these revocation lists against the certificates that you're using. Um, if you aren't using this, you have to roll your own certificate revocation checks, which are a very deep topic where you'll have to jump into uh, you know, RFC 5280 about X509 infrastructure and how to do these checks. So uh, if you want to use them, you probably want to use uh, advanced TLS. Um, and then the last example for Go is custom verification. Um, for this one, you give the advanced TLS options a function matching this signature. You get in this handshake verification info. So what happens here is we do the normal handshake with the normal cryptographic checks, all of the normal chain building that happens during a TLS handshake. And then once that's done, 
it passes through to this, this gets called back, and then you can use all of the different information on this struct to check whatever you want. This is a pretty contrived example, you know, that's from the examples in the repository where, you know, we say, we know we're gonna run the server on localhost uh, 50,051, 50, so the client will check to see if it's on 50,051, and if it's not, it'll fail out, um, but you can imagine uh, there's many other checks like this that you may want to do. So then we uh, can jump to C and C++. This one will be a little shorter because uh, it's not done yet. Uh, it's in progress. It's going to look really similar to Go and Java. We've worked really hard to get consistent APIs so that it, all of the polyglot people don't have to learn like deeply new security libraries to configure gRPC. Um, it is in progress. There's a, a gRFC, if you care to read it. Um, it is, that gRFC is, is mostly accepted, and we just have to do the implementation. And as kind of external users, um, it, you won't see the complexities of the implementation, but a lot of the inner security code is in kind of an old style C. And this is our time where we can bring it forward to a more modern C++ and give more modern uh, API design for everybody. So that'll be excellent for maintainability, but it just means uh, it's a much more intrusive uh, change to make to stabilize these APIs. Uh, that being said, all of the features that we've talked about so far with uh, certificate reloading, revocation support, custom verification checks, they're there in C and C++, and you can use them. And C will be versioned with gRPC core and gRPC C++. So you could use them, and then you know, eventually when we stabilize the API, there will be breaking changes, uh, but we'll have compatib uh, compatibility layers for clean changeovers and such. So you know, it's there, but not quite ready to say it's stable yet. Um, so that's kind of the updates on Go and C++. Um, so thank you guys for coming and, and talking about security with us. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, Andrea, you're here. Uh, hey. So we have a use case for mutual TLS. Mm -hmm. And our use case is to rotate certs and identity at runtime. But we have challenge. Um, in a way, if something goes wrong, either cert generation or trust row generation, at runtime, the application, when they reload the cert, it can fail. So how do you solve that problem, the runtime stability? Um, I, I can answer. So uh, we kind of take the approach on, on reloading. Um, it, it, a lot of times we'll have a, a knob where you can say, you know, if something is corrupted, use the most recent good information because we'd rather use the previously good information than, than crash which is, you know, you might want to crash or you might want to say, this is bad, but we still have old information that is usable and would be better than crashing. Um, but in general, kind of the answer to that at a broader level is that, you know, gRPC is not part of your PKI infrastructure itself. It's a user of the PKI infrastructure. So your, your PKI infrastructure should make sure that what it's delivering to be used is good and usable. But you said you automatically reload. Mm -hmm. I don't quite understand because the connectivity is already made. The handshake is already in place. When you switch your certificate in the middle, it probably would affect the next time when you're trying to reestablish the connection or when you recreate another stream mm -hmm. that may affect the, the, how a certificate is being used. But it's not going to affect their existing connections, right? Right. Their existing streams. Because they've already done a handshake. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Is the assumption of the application, if, for example, you're rotating a cert because one's, um, yeah, I'm so sorry. I think you're saying the assumption that it's on the application that if you rotated a cert because there was a compromise or it showed up on a krill or it was going to expire, the application team, when it received, when you add this functionality, would know to maybe reload an RPC to avoid having a cert that was expired. Is that a safe assumption then? Because to Jenny's point, you're not going to affect an existing uh, sub-channel 
over which an RPC is running if the connection is already there. You're, you're only going to affect new ones. Mm -hmm. So the application team is responsible for understanding if the change in the keys are making is, is there because of something that requires an immediate restart. Is that a fair assumption? Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, one quick question about uh, reloading, actually, right? Uh, our current implementation, they support file-based reloading. Uh, but uh, there are definitely, if you already know your PKI, you can implement some interfaces and, for example, fetch certificates from somewhere. And you can create like any kind of levels of abstractions there. For example, you know, before fetching, you introduce logic to check if certificates are actually working and only after that to reload them. But uh, yeah, for open source, again, we just provide the interface and we provide some basic implementation to show you how to achieve these things. Right, that's it. like the, the file watchers that we really highlighted here and these periodic reloaders are uh, kind of a built-in implementation that fit a lot of OSS use cases, but if you have something more specific, it is, that's just an implementation of, a, of an interface and you can go as, as deep as you want with your own specialized implementation. But in terms of what belongs in OSS gRPC, these kind of basic file watchers are what we want to provide for general use cases. So I got two more questions. One is about the query validation. So the events, the TLS uh, libraries or the feature is going to validate the query at a runtime if we provided that. Is that true? So we don't really have to kind of build everything ourselves during the handshake, the query is being validated. That's already built into your uh, advanced TLS feature. Is that true? Yeah, if you, if you set up all the certificates and such, it'll do all of the normal TLS or MTLS, however you have it configured, yep. uh, handshakes. Okay. So the second question is around the keys. I think the way that you talked about uh, defining the trust manager and, you know, the, the key managers and all of that, uh, towards this is software-based um, certificates, right? Uh, do you support HSMs um, if my certificate stored in an HSMs, does this library support that? So all of this is based around like X509. Uh, you can leave certificate, Not just signing. They're just, well, the key is actually for us, some of the things are stored in HSMs mm -hmm. that's required. So how are we gonna? So that's where you can take uh, the, the interfaces and instead of you know using the, the built-in, like say file watchers, you can implement any kind of identity providers and uh, you implement the interface and you pass it in and then you would know how to pull that data that is the, you know, in the end, there's some byte representation of all of our certificates. Um, and if you have it in kind of a specialized storage, then, then you know how to get it out of that storage and into some byte buffer somewhere to be used. Uh, so talking about Java in particular, right, uh, actually, again, uh, I encourage you to check how exactly the file watch is implemented, right? So actually, it just reads from the uh, file system. And if uh, you have, like, specialized logic, for example, to fetch it for HSM, or maybe from uh, another, like, key store in the cloud, uh, that's definitely you'll need to uh, implement. Can we, how about we connect with you offline? I think we might be able to help you there, because that's... They're not files. For the exactly. Sentence, it's not file based. It, it overloads the Java script extensions to. Uh, it's, a, it's a sleight of hand. Right? You can't get the key JDK out of script extensions. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah the, um, that's, so. Yep. Yeah. The, the interfaces aren't file specific. The, the file watchers are just a. Uh, it, the, it, the kind of OSS. Typically, we're check. talking about a PKCS 11 support. Mm -hmm. So the question is does the. I guess this library, this new feature supported that yet at this moment? Uh, in Java, out of the box, uh, like that, no. Okay. But definitely you can build it uh, just by fitting it into existing hierarchical classes of interface. You interfaces. might want to consider that because yeah. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> I think the, the thing is it, it's difficult, like, uh, from, you know, what belongs in the actual, like, gRPC repositories of, like, specialized data stores, like, everybody's might look a little bit different. Um, so how do we get, but in the end, right, there's some way that you get these bytes, you know, into, into your process, and then, and then you can pass them in through these interfaces. 
Uh, I have a question uh, not related directly to the features, but more if you have insights about how people are adapting TLS in the infrastructure, and specifically, I'm curious about performance impact of adapting TLS. Have you seen people using something like uh, session resumptions to mitigate the impact of expensive TLS handshake, uh, or is it not common? Uh, so for uh, session, so f first of all, you know, let me answer the first part of the question, right? Uh, gRPC is actually tuned for uh, runtime, right? And uh, we consider TLS handshake uh, as kind of warm up before RPC. So it's not uh, super tuned for that. And for session resumption, actually, uh, it also depends on the language you are using because uh, again, what we are doing here, we are just uh, wrapping the underlying crypto libraries. Uh, we can also like connect uh, offline, and you can tell us about uh, the language and what exact scenario you're looking for. Yeah, thank you. And uh, do you have any kind of benchmarks related to uh, TLS adoption? Uh, I'm, I think maybe for C++ uh, there is some, but uh, I'm not really sure about uh, other languages. Again. Uh, I would be surprised to see if there are like benchmarks for gRPC like warm up activities. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, is there intention to uh, make that multi privileged world that you can differ between different user groups like admin or um, standard user by this certificate? Um, I'm sorry, can you, I didn't quite understand. Um, okay, I explain it again, I'm sorry. Um, is it possible to have multi-user authentication with different privilege levels according to the certificate? That I can give an administrator and certificate, a user and certificate, and they can right. log in with different access roles over the, the PRC. So in that sense, um, you can configure chains of credentials. So, you know, credentials can live inside of credentials, inside of credentials. Um, and with that kind of thing, if you're implementing these interfaces, then, you know, you could have a transport credential that, you know, say has an identity provider, and then you can implement whatever logic you want inside of that provider to serve, you know, a thousand different certificates if you so desire. Um, you could oh, okay. have a thousand file watchers inside of a, a broader, you know, implementation of the interface. Okay, perfect. Uh, so one uh, very important note here, right? Uh, first of all, there is like SPIFIA specification, right? Uh, which includes some extra information about the workloads inside the certificates. That's like one way to go. Another way to go actually is authorization because you uh, have a certificate, and then the, inside gRPC there is also authorization uh, framework which protects like, what you want and it definitely provides a lot of flexibility. And I think uh, that's our time. We uh, need to move on to getting to our next talks.